Angela Merkel back to the White House. Over the past year, I have enjoyed getting to know the Chancellor very well through many productive calls, discussions, and meetings. We have a great relationship. Chancellor, I want to congratulate you once again on your election victory, fourth term in office. It's really something. Congratulations. We're also pleased to have our newly confirmed United States Ambassador to Germany, Richard Grinnell, an outstanding man. And he's with us today. And Richard, congratulations. Do a great job. And I know you will. Thank you. This confirmation was long overdue. We've been waiting a long time for Richard to get his clearance. And he got it. And it's going to be special. But we have a lot of people that are waiting approval. And the Democrats have been treating us extremely unfairly. And they're going to have to move it along. For decades, the alliance and friendship between Germany and the United States has advanced the cause of peace. Some of these countries are immensely wealthy, and they're going to start paying for it and paying for this tremendous help that we've given them. The Chancellor and I also had a productive discussion about the security of Europe and the responsibility of European nations to properly contribute to their own defense. We addressed the need to strengthen NATO and the NATO alliance by ensuring that all member states honor their commitment to spend 2 percent and, hopefully, much more of GDP on defense. It is essential that our NATO allies increase their financial contribution so that everyone is paying their fair share. We look forward to seeing further progress towards improved burden sharing, a lot of people have stepped up. A lot of countries have stepped up. And they're going to have to continue to do so. Tremendous amount of additional money has been raised for NATO over the past 16 months. And I'm proud to have helped. But they have to keep going. In this age of international crime, smuggling, terrorism, and traffic, it is also essential that we have strong border security and immigration control. 
This is fundamental to national defense, also vital to our security, and that of our allies is America's ability to maintain a strong and robust manufacturing base, which we really are doing in the United States. We have additional steel plants opening. Steel plants are expanding. Aluminum is doing great. A lot of things are happening that were never going to happen before. That's why we must have a fair and reciprocal trading relationship with our friends and partners. We have a trade deficit in goods with the European Union of approximately, hard to believe, $151 billion a year, including a $50 billion annual trade deficit in autos and auto parts. I'm committed to working with Chancellor Merkel to reduce barriers for United States exports to remedy these trade imbalances and deepen our economic ties. We also welcome the Chancellor's in Iraq and Syria against uh, terrorism in Afghanistan or in Africa, and we depend urgently on each other. Today we meet at a point in time where it has become very clear that the strength of uh, the American president um, and where he really saw to it that the sanctions against North Korea are um, abided by are respected has opened new possibilities, opened new ways. This first meeting between Kim Jong-un and uh, the South um, Korean President uh, Moon is a first step on a road that will hopefully lead into um, a better uh, future. We Germans know only too well what it means after years of separation, uh, separation, after years of division, to have these first contacts, uh, but we will continue continue to be vigilant to see to it that denuclearization is stopped of North Korea and that a nuclear-free zone is established uh, in, on the Korean peninsula. We think that this is essential. We will have to see also in um, our fight against the, the Iranian attempts to uh, become nuclear um, will go on. We are of the opinion that the JCPOA is a first step that has um, contributed to slowing down their activities 
activities in this particular respect to also establish a better verification and monitoring process. But we also think, um, from a German perspective, that this is not sufficient uh, in order to uh, see to it uh, that um, Iran's uh, ambitions are um, curbed and are contained. Um, it is most important to see that Iran, after all, is trying to exert a geopolitical influence um, in Syria, um, in Lebanon, and um, in Iraq. And when we have to see to it that this uh, attempt at influence is uh, curbed, is contained, and um, that beyond JCPOA, reliability can be established. Um, and I think that Europe and the United States of America ought to be in lockstep on this, or to work together very closely also uh, to end the terrible bloodshed in Syria and to bring about a solution for the region as a whole. Beyond that and over and above that, we also addressed um, the tasks that we see ahead um, on defense. Germany in 2019 is going to um, earmark a um, share of 1.3 of its uh, GDP um, on defense. Uh, that has been an increase over the past few years. We haven't yet met uh, the target where we should be, but we are getting closer to uh, the target, to the guideline that we've set uh, for ourselves in Wales. Uh, on trade, I think it's most important to see that very close relations on trade exist between Germany and the European Union on the one hand and the United States on the other. We want fair trade. All right, we'll take some questions. Uh, Blake Berman, yes. Blake. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Chancellor Merkel, I'll ask a couple of questions of the President first. Uh, I want to ask you, let's step over, it's crowded in here. I want to ask you about a couple comments that you made in the Oval Office earlier in which you said uh, about North Korea that they've played the U.S. in the past like a fiddle, but that's not going to happen to us. Do you, as it relates to hopefully getting peace on the Korean Peninsula, denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, do you feel as if you need to be the closer in that deal? Do you want to be the closer in that deal? Or do you think that's something that is shared by all of the major stakeholders, all of the, the world leaders within that region? And secondly, uh, indulge us if you might, uh, you said that the relationship with North Korea has been uh, strong, or one of the words you used. Have you spoken with uh, Kim Jong-un himself, or do you plan on speaking yeah, with him? I don't want to comment on that. Do you plan on but speaking with him before? we have a uh, very good working relationship 
Uh, we're setting up a meeting. Uh, things have changed very radically from a few months ago. You know the name calling and a lot of other things. Uh, we uh, we get a kick every once in a while out of the fact that uh, I'll be watching people that failed so badly over the last 25 years explaining to me how to make a deal with North Korea. I get a big, big kick out of that. But uh, we are doing very well. I think that uh, something very dramatic could happen. They're treating us with great respect. And uh, you know what's going on with South Korea. And I think President Moon of South Korea was very generous in saying that we helped make the Olympics a great success because of the fact that, as you know, there was a tremendous animosity. There was a tremendous problem going on. And uh, all of a sudden, people started buying tickets because whole different feeling when North said, we'd love to go to the Olympics. So a lot of good things are happening with respect to North Korea. Uh, President Obama told me when I had the one meeting with him, he said, that's your biggest problem. That's going to be the most difficult thing you have. And honestly, I wish it was handled earlier. I wish it were handled by another administration years ago. I'm not just talking about President Obama. I go back to state of affairs of the negotiations and the respective assessments on where we stand on this and uh, the decision lies uh, with the president Herr Ross. Okay. mr ross please thank you uh, i have a question for the chancellor but i'd like to start uh, with a question on iran for you mr president um, after a long day of talks with you president macron went to congress warned of a new war in the middle east and asked the world and the United States to respect the sovereignty of all countries, including Iran. In the absence of a new agreement, are you prepared to use military force to rein in the nuclear program in Iran, or do you have another plan B that is not an agreement and not military force? I don't talk about whether or not I'd use military force. It's not appropriate to be talking about. But I can tell you this. Uh, they will not be doing nuclear weapons. That I can tell you. Okay? They're not going to be doing nuclear weapons. You can bank on it. Okay. Please. 
Frau Bundeskanzlerin, noch vor einem Jahr Madam war die große Sorge in Berlin, ago, um, dass Präsident Berlin Trump nicht bereit sein könnte, Russland not gegenüber Herzen being zu ready to show uh, toughness uh, against Russia. Russia. Now you've come to Washington uh, with the concern that a new round of sanctions against the so-called oligarchs may well be detrimental to the German uh, economy. Have you asked the President to exempt uh, German companies from these sanctions? And are you generally worried that the um, United States, because the, pres the President is trying to be uh, toughest with President Putin, may well uh, change completely and may well be uh, treating Russia too harshly without coordinating with you? Well, we discussed Ukraine, and here we work together very closely against the illegitimate uh, actions of Russia due to, for example, annexation of Crimea and also the situation they caused in eastern Ukraine. I'm uh, very pleased to uh, say that uh, we work very closely uh, with the American administration in uh, com complementing the Minsk format. Um, and the sanctions very much um, are a thing of the Congress, uh, and we work together with the representative of the administration here uh, also, and very um, uh, closely with the Treasury. Uh, we exchange views on what sort of um, secondary effects that may have, and looking at the uh, conflicts we have with Russia, for example, in uh, Syria, there is a wide degree of agreement, uh, and no one is interested in not having good relations with Russia, but wherever there are conflicts, wherever there are certain things happening, as for example in Ukraine, we have to call a spade a spade. Man, about a man who has a son who's a top student at Annapolis, about a man that's given his life to this country and to the military, a brave man who would have been a great leader. To say the kind of things that he said, you had President Obama giving him an A-plus report. You had President Bush giving him an A-plus report. You have President Trump giving him an A-plus report report and to make statements of things that most people said never happened, never even happened. Calling them names was, to me, a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. And I think it's something we learned from. I called him today. I said, in a certain way, you're in a, in a very big way, you're an American hero because you've exposed the system for some horrible things. I've had it happen to me, with the Russian collusion hoax, it's a hoax. But I came into the job understanding that things happen. He didn't. 
He's a great doctor. He's a great admiral. He didn't really think a thing like this could happen. And I think it's a disgrace. So I just want to comment on that. And actually, I'm glad you asked the question. I think this man has been treated — he's an American hero, and I think he's been treated very unfairly. Okay? As far as a nomination, have you put forward a new nomination yet? I have many people that want the position, if you can believe it. With all of this being said, uh, we have some excellent people, some very political people, some people that uh, a thing like that wouldn't happen, or if it did happen, I guess they'll handle it somewhat differently. Um, but we have many people that want that job. We're very proud of the job we've done for the veterans. The, the veterans have been uh, — we've gotten accountability approved, which is something that for years — for years they've been trying to get. As you know, they couldn't get it approved. We got accountability. So that when somebody treats our veterans badly, we can fire them so fast, almost as fast as they fire people in Germany. We'll get rid of them. And I will tell you, we're getting choice. We're putting choice in very, very strongly. We have tremendous support in the Senate for that. But I do. I have a lot of people that want the job. We're getting — we're doing a great job over there in, for the vets. And, you know, that was one of the things that, to me, was the most important. We had tremendous support from the vets. Uh, we're getting great reports. But getting a thing such as accountability done, we'll be soon getting choice done. Meaning, if a veteran stands online and can't get to a doctor, for various reasons. They're going to a private doctor, and this country is going to pay. They're not going to wait nine weeks online for a cure to something that could have been very easy to cure, and then they end up dying from it. So we're going to uh Great site. The site's better than anything you could imagine. But that's the way government works. They were going to spend a billion dollars, and we're going to spend much less than a half a million. Could have done it for much less than that, but I said, let's make it really nice. So that's what it is. Uh, I may go. Very proud of it. Jerusalem has been a subject that's been promised for many years, as you know, the embassy in Jerusalem. It's been promised for many, many years by presidents. They all made campaign promises, and they never had the courage to carry it out. I carried it out. So I may go. It's getting ready to open. And I do want to tell that story, though, because uh, there are a couple of people that got to see it, including Mike, but others, where literally they were going to spend a billion dollars, and we're spending a tiny, tiny fraction of that in the hundreds of thousands of dollars instead. And it will be very nice. Maybe it'll be nicer than a billion-dollar building. Okay? Uh, for the Chancellor, please. Well, Chancellor, I wanted to ask about the Iran nuclear deal. You just heard President Trump say that Iran will not 
be restarting the nuclear program, you can bank on it. Do you fear that if the U.S. backs out, that Iran will restart their nuclear program? And also, you're the second European Union leader, or European leader to stop here at the White House this week. Uh, what improvements did you recommend to the President uh, that needs to be changed in order to keep the U.S. in the deal? Well, I set out my position, and that is that I believe that um, obviously the, this agreement is anything but perfect. It will not solve all the problems with Iran. It is one piece of the mosaic, one building block, if you like, on which we can build up this structure. Um, and that um, uh, when the United Kingdom, uh, uh, France, and Germany work together with the American colleagues, uh, uh, this was brought about. And and, and we will now see what sort of decisions are made by uh, American uh, partners. I said that the whole of the region obviously is of prime importance to us because it's not a thousand kilometers away um, as it is the case, for example, between the USA and, and Syria. But uh, Syria and Iran are countries that are right on our doorstep. So that is of prime importance for us. And uh, we will continue to be in very close talks on this. Frau Duns. Ma Mrs. Duns, please. Christina Duns from uh, Rheinische Post. Uh, Madam Chancellor, you used to describe America as a destination of uh, your uh, sort of uh, what you ever wanted to be. And now it's said in Germany uh, by you that uh, Europe actually has to take its destiny in its own hands and that you cannot rely on the United States supporting you uh, all the time. Have you talked uh, with the President about this? engaged, very broadly engaged in parts of the world that are far away from America. And the people of America, too, have said, well, what's in it for us? So um, the president uh, is um, saying you ought to have some more burden sharing. So in a way, we're maturing. We're, we're growing out of a role where after the Second World War, people were rather happy for Germany not becoming too engaged, not uh, too active, because during the period of National Socialism, we created such incredible injustices in the world, and uh, but this post-war period is at an end. It's more than 
this post-war period is, is um, well, that, that's essentially 70 years ago. So we as Germans have to learn to um, assume more responsibility. We're proud to be the second largest troop contributor in NATO. We've done a lot over the past few years, obviously from the President's perspective, not uh, perhaps uh, uh, fast enough, but I would say, as German Chancellor, we have made important steps in the right direction, and we will continue to do so. We cannot rely if conflicts are on our doorstep uh, for others to step in, and we ourselves don't have to give a, a contribution, and this contribution will have to increase over the next few years to come. That has something to do with military um, uh, engagement, with defense spending, with combating and tackling root causes of flight, um, but also with the readiness to become more engaged in diplomacy. Germany, for example, for the first time, is part and parcel of the so-called small group uh, that has just had a meeting in Paris on Syria together with the U.S., uh, with the UK, with Saudi Arabia, and we want to give our contribution to this as well. It's our obligation. It's our duty. I don't think that we ought to complain about this. Um, we have to learn as a big country, as an economically successful country, as the president says, you're economically successful, but militarily and politically you don't wish to do so much. We have to learn to assume our role, and there are differences of opinion. We, as friends, can discuss that openly. Thank you, Chancellor. We need